Welcome in, welcome in. Eric's Angel Podcast starts one hour early on Fridays. I mentioned that, but if you didn't catch it, no big deal. Rich isn't sure. He says, uh, did he hit the wrong button? I thought that he got off the air on Q100 at 10. Yes, that's that's true. Oh, no. So everybody thinks I'm still on the air, I guess. Including this guy, Trump, who wants to be on the show, and I, I try to tell him, but he won't listen. Uh, Eric Zancho, hi, who's this? Oh, hang on, sir. Sorry, my my equipment. Donald Trump, I'm so I'm so glad to be on Q100 this morning. It's fantastic, actually. Thank you for putting me on the show. No, sir. Uh, I I don't know if you know, but um, I uh. Well, listen. I thought I thought you know I wanted to talk to you about rock and roll music. There's nothing like it, and I'm so glad that you're up there in the airwaves in our great northern Michigan, providing yeah. this wonderful service to our great patriots. You know, yeah. rock music, it gets the blood bumping and adrenaline flowing, so I've got a request for you, Big Fraud Zane. Yeah. Are you ready for it? Sure, sure, sir. I'd like you to crank up some We Will Rock You by Queen. I think it's a classic. It's powerful, and it's the perfect anthem for all of us out here fighting to make America great again. So what do you say, Big Fraud, let's 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 start with that. Of course, I think that's a wonderful request. Actually, probably beautiful. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sir, it is. I'm sure all of the audience on Q100 who's listening, not really, will uh, will will love that, sir. And the fact that you've um, that you've that you've joined us on the radio, even though I try to tell well, let you. Let me tell you, Eric. It's unbelievable, by the way, what's happening with this radical left New York judge, <laughs> Arthur Egeron. Total Trump hater, he's, let me tell you, he's pulling this gag order nonsense and trying to silence me, but I will not stand for it. And I think our great northern patriots agree with me, of course. Right. He pulls this number out of thin air, big fraud, $355 million, million. Can you believe it? And he wants me to bond it. Yeah, bond it. It's yes. impossible, Eric. Yeah, it is. It is, sir. I'm sure if, uh, if we were on the radio, all of the northern Michigan patriots would be... Uh, would be very uh, supportive of you, sir. Well, it's terrible. It's 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 like it's like an impossible amount of money, Eric. No bonding company could handle that kind of amount. I mean, it's like something out of a bad comedy sketch. Or well, I, I thought you had the money. I totally have the money. You know, people come up to me they with tears in their eyes. They say, "Mr. President, Mr. President, you've done nothing wrong." And they're so totally right, Eric. But this crooked judge, this overturned four times already, he knows what he's doing. Listen, it's a witch hunt, plain and simple. And let me tell you about this corrupt and racist attorney general, Big Fraud. They, they're tag teaming against me, trying to destroy me. But you know what? I won't let them win. I won't let them win. No, I'll fight no. tooth and nail Sir. until justice is totally served. New oh. York's falling apart, Big Fraud. Sir, I, uh, I, you know, I've got, uh, I got your song ready to play on the radio, as far as you know. Well, that's fantastic. I think Queen is probably one of the best rock musicians yes, ever, actually. Yes, okay. It's quite impressive. Well, I'll uh, I'll play it for you. You know how we uh, here on the radio, we have to, um, you know, uh, keep it moving and play the song. So I'm going to play the, if you could uh, front sell it for us, that would be awesome. You know, maybe say here, I'm the president, here's Queen on Q100. That'd be great. Oh, that's a terrific idea, Big Fraud. Terrific idea. Everyone, my great Northern Patriots. From northern Michigan, probably the best state in the union, let's be so honest. You should totally secede and destroy crooked, crooked wretch, big wretch they go. We will play, we will rock you like queen. It's a total classic right here on Q100 on the Inzade Asylum with our most wonderful host, Big Fraud Eric saying, right here on Q100. Is that good? 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 You did. You totally hit the post. No, it's totally, totally something I'm so used to. You know, I did so many years in broadcasting, so it's wonderful yes. to be with you, Eric. Sir, you did a great job. Thank you. Oh, he just hung up on me. All right. I, I've been trying to tell him that he is not going to be on Q100. I've tried to tell him this a hundred times. And uh, in case you're just you know, figuring this out, the, the show only goes to... Hold on. The show goes until nine on Friday because there's a show called Northern Focus, 
which uh, is like covers all the hard hitting topics in northern uh, northern Michigan. JC does that show, so I get out early. I get out of school early. That's that's what's going down. Um, and so Trump has been like, I got to get on Q100, and I'm like, well, I don't think they want you. They, uh, I brought it up, and they, you know, I, every time I try to explain to him what's going on, he never lets me finish. So now it's just like I just got to go with it and make him think that we're on the radio. So. Holy shit. So glad that he was able to join us. Uh, this is, of course, a, a, <laughs> a daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures. Uh, I got a text from somebody who says, from now on, when Trump calls, answer the phone. Q100, who, who's this? All right. Um, I'm going to bring in Rick from TC Paintball early on the show. Because he's uh, he's a busy beaver. Good morning. Hey, Rick, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Never better. You're you're busy again, huh? Did we go through a time change? I didn't realize. I thought you were starting us at ten. Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, people are gonna have to get used to that. Um, Monday through Friday or Thursday, the show ends at 10, but on Friday, it ends at 9. Well, there goes consistency, huh? That's weird. Well, the uh, the radio station has a show that goes from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Friday. So uh, they said that I get out of school early. What do you think of that, Rick? Is it the local deer migration report? Like, what, what show do they have on Fridays that would supersede you? I'm glad you asked that, Rick. Uh, the show is called Northern Focus. And, um, you know, various luminaries and bigwigs uh, spend a few minutes with one of the amazing personalities on Q100. And, uh, and they, they chit-chat about this, that, and the other. That's, that's, that's how it is, I guess. So I said, okay, sounds good to me. I'm not, I'm not one to rock the boat, Rick. I don't know if you know that about me. I, I did not know that about you. I didn't realize where I was going to hear the term luminaries this morning, but uh, here we go. <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't surprise me if they did talk deer migration and other things, you know, get like the local DNR. I mean, that is Northern Michigan is essentially another country. When in Rome. Yes. Yes. So I'm all about it. You know, I've got to, I got to lean into everything there in order to make, make my presence felt. I'm trying to give, I'm trying to go less is more for a change. Well, I feel like well, I need to wait a few weeks before I ask you a question like this, but how, and, I, and I've heard, I've heard like a half hour a day or so, so I haven't heard the whole show, but how do you feel it's going? Um, it is, uh, takes all of my strength to push all the buttons correctly. So when you have that where I don't have it down yet, then it kind of like makes it difficult to do the things I want to do that I want to say, because I'm, my mind's in like being pulled in three directions. But that'll that'll come eventually. Uh, for the most part, I'm just keeping it very simple. Let's see. We got the birthday club at uh, 8.50 when I announce the birthdays of the day, Rick. That's always special. And then, uh, you know, I got to do the weather and the sports and all that fun stuff and play the music. The, and play the, This is an interesting station because you can play actual requests, which is something that is not really a thing in radio. Never really has been in the time that I've been on the air. This is the first time I've worked at a station that like if Rick uh, from TC Paintball called, I could actually play whatever he wanted. Do you find that it, it you're kind of reverting to some old muscle memory when you're doing these things? Or do you really have to focus on not saying fuck every other sentence? Uh, that hasn't, um, yeah, I haven't in any way. It's such a different animal that it's never, ever been even... When you said it, I was like, oh, my God, you're right. I, But no, it's just uh, knowing that you're on the radio and um, it just kind of like puts up a barrier, an impenetrable barrier. You know, in my, in my mind's eye, when I'm picturing you, I picture you when I listen to, you, you know, doing the pod. And then I'm picturing you when I'm listening to you do a radio show in my mind's eye. When right. You're doing the so I feel like your your office chair is closer to your desk. You're sitting a little bit more upright in a little bit better posture. And when you're doing the pod, I feel like you're a little bit more slouched in, comfortable, and just kind of hanging out with your friends. Yes, that uh, 
I, I think that that is a fair assessment. You know, there's, there's a few things that I park on. You'll, you'll be able to detect the moments when I'm, I'm getting more comfortable and relaxed. But um, yes. when it comes to the formatics of the station and, uh, and the things that, that I actually have to do, you know, yeah, I, I, I kind of am just reading. But, yeah, you know, there was various moments I was talking today about, like, uh, Michigan State winning and the Red Wings winning and, and Oakland upsetting Kentucky. Those are all big stories that people wanted to hear uh, an opinion about. So, you know, you kind of and, – and it's just – this is not heavy lifting. Um, I consider the podcast to be heavy lifting because, you know, you have a lot of time to talk and there's there's a lot of things – in order to uh, do this appropriately but when you're relying on the music it's it's a lot easier i'm more of just kind of like a a host it's uh it i i try not to get too far away with what has made the radio station popular in the last 10 years like if i suddenly kicked in the door it was like all right we're gonna talk for 10 minutes about this people would would ha- fucking want to kill me I, when I coach, when I coach football, I, um, I kind of overplan my practices because I feel I'm being judged by parents and my assistant coaches. And I never want to get to a point where I ran through all my content and we're all standing around with another hour in practice going, well, what do we do next? And I feel like that's the same way a podcast would go when I don't have the ability to put on a song or put on an ad that was pre-recorded. You know, you kind of like on your own. And if you get to that bottom of that list and you're looking at the clock and there's still time to remain, you're going, well, what the hell do I do now? Yeah, I know it. I know it. And it, what's weird is I'm much more comfortable talking for two hours, having a conversation on here than I am talking for three minutes an hour. I- well, yeah. <laughs> when all else fails, you just go rip on Kenny a little bit, right? <laughs> yesterday the birthday club happened on the radio and i i said and a happy birthday to kenny in nashville i gotta make it a point to wish him a happy birthday every day (laughs) every day and uh, once again a happy birthday to kenny in nashville that uh that uh, that's a good easter egg where the the people that are in the know will be listening to that you know what i mean yes and, and, I'm, good and I'm very protective of the podcast. Like I haven't mentioned it once um, on the radio. I don't. I don't want any cross pollination to begin with. Because well, you do though, right? Ultimately, not you know, when people- not to start. Not to start. I don't want to overpower these people. I want. No, event- of course. Do it to yeah. start. You just be like, hey, you know, I've, I've been on in the middle of the night before and now I'm down during the day. But as they get more and more comfortable with you, I'm assuming you're going to drop that a little bit. So have you, I mean, you know, you look at your analytics, you know what's going on as far as your downloads, your listens and your views and those things. So do you, have you noticed anything yet where there's like an influx of influx of people that are going out looking for you because they've been made aware of you, uh, you know, on the morning drive? No, but the only thing that I've seen is they, I have my own Facebook page at the radio station set up. So I'm, I'm, meeting new people there's not a lot of people that follow it but there's not a lot of people that live up there either so it's all very gradual and i haven't went and and sought out any type of uh uh, looking to see any type of response to yeah i'm just i'm just kind of i'm merging into traffic right now that's that's how i describe it yeah like i said a couple weeks down the road these questions might be a little bit more valid or applicable but i'm just uh, i'm curious you know it's a it's a it's a paradigm shift that we talked about before and you know it's going to take you a while to fall into a groove i feel and get really comfortable with the you know the pace and the right and that is the show but the pace of your entire morning where you go from one to the next and whatnot right right like tim he's enjoying the show right now and he writes i hear you on the radio maybe two times at most in my 25 minute drive home lots of music and it's like, absolutely, because at this stage of the game, um, that's the only thing anyone has ever known on that in that audience is this style of presenting. So if it's going to happen where more and more conversation is going to take place, it would be a very gradual process. But honestly, I don't I don't I don't see that happening. I see just, you know, uh, doing doing this like this and trying to sprinkle in the personality um uh, playing long game as opposed to huge amounts of conversation and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's exciting, though. It's exciting to see where I'll go. Of course, you don't think I can do it. We, we already talked about that. We already know that Rick thinks I'm going to fail. I didn't say you're going to fail. I'm saying I'm <laughs> as far as the podcast goes and keeping your motivations up to be able to come off a radio show where you put a lot of time and energy into oh, yeah. it and then start over at 10 a.m. Yeah, or 9 a.m. Yeah, it sounds to me like it's failing. 
I'm just busting your balls. Did you are you are you a fan of the tournament? I'm a huge fan of the tournament. I'm a larger fan of the tournament than I am of college basketball. Oh yeah. I don't know anybody in college basketball uh up until today. You know, I know Jack uh Golke now. Yeah, you do. Ten of twenty and the only shot from beyond the arc, that's awesome. Yeah, considering the fact that uh if he'd have hit all those, he'd have had sixty points for God's sake. Oh uh, man, that would have been a blowout. What's that? And it would have been a blowout then. Right, I mean, like, right. Yeah. It was, what was, that? was it a 13 over a three, 14 over a three. What was that? Oh uh, yes. That's what it was. 14 over a three. Um, and, and yeah. Oakland, they were acting like they've been there before after the game. Um, that goal key leaned into the microphone. He said, we are not a Cinderella. Yeah. I saw him on Scott Van Pelt this morning. It was pretty good. I, I, you know, it's just moments like that. You talk about the story of sports where you don't care about this or that, but you care about the story. The, the tournament is just so full of those oh, stories, yeah. you know, oh, kids yeah. that, you know, thought that maybe their career was coming to an end and they were squeezing out just the last little bit of, of, uh, of, of a notoriety. And then all of a sudden they, they do something on the big stage that maybe propels them into the NBA or propels them into college basketball lore. Those are pretty cool moments. Was totally cool. I loved it. Spartans win. Uh, that that they they advance, but the big story is Oakland. I mean, uh, they, they, most people who are watching probably think it's Oakland, California. I had to look at. I wasn't sure. I mean, I was aware obviously that Oakland uh, was in Michigan, but um, or, or uh, but I didn't know if that was the Oakland in Michigan. I didn't know what their mascot was. Yeah, Golden Grizzlies for the large bear population in Southeast Michigan. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, did you fill out a bracket? Yeah, I did. And, and honestly, I haven't even gone back to look at it. You know, it's one of those things where you put it out there and you're making a bunch of guesses. Some of the guesses are calculated, but not most of them. Most of them are just a guess based on what I know about the program, you know, over the last, you know, however many decades I've been paying attention to sports. If I've heard their name or, or witnessed them in a highlight beating a team or something, a lot of it comes down to that. But then, you know, then the stories emerge and you become, you know, almost a fan of a particular school. You know, it, uh, it's cool. But I did fill out a bracket. I haven't even gone back to look at my bracket yet. My uh, my son has filled out a bracket for the first time this year. He's got like a little competition going in one of his classes. So he's really in tune to the the, the uh, tournament. And I've been telling him for months how cool the tournament is. So to see him, you know, kind of get excited when different teams win, that's kind of a neat thing too. You get to share it with him. All right. The next thing I want to mention to you, Rick, is uh, there's a, my, uh, a guy I work with over at Bosco's has a theory about, there's two theories. The first one is Cam Sutton is dead. And he goes that route. He talks about it because of how this guy has vanished after the domestic violence accusation. Lions have released him. Um, And he said, how in the world can someone just disappear with technology today? License plate scanners on the lookout for the the vehicle, cell phones. He's, He's vanished. He hasn't contacted any of his family. He hasn't been seen since the warrant went out for his arrest. Um, so, so I know I, I have some vague details on this story. And what I read or heard was he it was domestic battery, right? which is different than domestic assault, I think. I think it's worse. Well, they, right? they, they talked about strangulation. Well, didn't didn't he like throw her off a patio or some shit? I've heard others mention that, but I haven't read that either. I don't it seems like it's kind of a funky um a funky bit of details. Well, you know, maybe he's dead. Anything can happen any time. But, you know, we, you've talked a bunch of times about guys, you know, really stepping in dog shit um, as, as far as screwing up their character. And, you know, and, and we talk about, or you've talked about, rather, I've listened to you talk about, the best way to handle that is just kind of lay low and let it blow over. Maybe he's doing the best job of laying low and just kind of, you know, hopefully people stop talking about him if he well. doesn't make more headlines yeah but that's for people who aren't wanted by the cops <laughs> well, right. that's a different caveat to the story i guess and then the other theory is there was supposedly a child custody hearing that was about to happen my buddy at bosco's dougie says what if the wife um had him killed <laughs> like somebody somebody took him out and killed him and made it look like uh, he killed himself after, and then, you know, the, the whole thing's a setup, which I think is a hell of a lot more wild of a conspiracy theory. The first one, maybe, but I'm not so sure about the second one. 
So maybe he's sitting in his car, in his garage with the car running right now. That's a possibility. It is a possibility, but they can't find him and the Lions cut him. I'm kind of, the Lions are probably breathing a sigh of relief because he sucks so bad. They were kind of stuck with him, you know? Yes. Yeah. But this is a good opportunity to move on as far as, you know, putting your product on the field. I mean, obviously domestic assault and all that shit, that, that, those things go bigger than sports and that, that kind of hits home for, you know, some people or whatever, but uh, you know, it, uh, it, it could have been a good, you know, get out of jail free card or, you know, opportunity for the lions to kind of, you know, move their secondary forward, which we all know they need to help there. Did you see that story about that asshole that Michigan signed as a coach? Oh, the drunk driver dude. Yes. They <laughs> well, yeah, have like three instances. This is that this was his third uh, drunk driving. He's, he signed his deal to be a coach on March 8th. And, you know, we hardly knew you. He uh, resigned yesterday. Oh, good. Good. Th- Fuck that guy. 13. You know, anybody that doesn't, and I'm sorry to anybody in the audience that uh, that that is, is in this situation, and maybe I, I'm ignorant by saying this, I have alcoholism in my family, and I had a lot of family members that had to deal with it, had to go for uh, um, treatment for it. But I got a DWI in 2005. And at that point in my life, you know, Jesus, 19 years ago now, I was spending a lot of time at the bar, and that was kind of my hangout. Um, didn't have a regular girl at the time. Um, in fact, I think I was getting divorced, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I was. I was just before I was getting my divorce. So I had a lot of life to live and yeah. a lot of hang to do and, and being social and whatnot. But I got that DUI, and I looked myself in the mirror and said, listen, you're not going to be one of these guys that gets three or four of them. You're going to be one of these guys that gets it and then changes the way he behaves. So I, I got, I took a, you know, just like a buy it off the internet breathalyzer, figure out how much beer I could drink and, and still blow under the legal limit. And that was my limit when I went to the bar. I would stop drinking. I would drink water. I would still hang out or whatever. But you got to learn your lesson there, man. You can't let it, uh, yeah. you can't let it be down. And and like I said, some people have it worse than me. So if it if you got the thirst and you can't turn it off, then maybe I just don't understand that. But man, this society there's so much information out there about people doing the wrong thing, running people over when they're drunk, changing people's lives that are completely innocent. Right. I don't, I don't want to be that person. Yeah. This guy, you know, uh, maybe this is the rock bottom. Here he is. Despite the previous two Deweys, he's still been climbing the ladder and just 33 years old gets, gets a dream job at Michigan, fucks it up. I mean, at some point you gotta, you gotta fucking grow up. Uh, you yeah. Know. You- you're hanging out with these uh, 18, 19, 20 year olds all the time that are just getting away from, you know, uh, get, just getting out on their own and having some freedom for the first time. So they're partying hard. You know, some of those assistant coaches are hanging out with the with the players. You know, they are. But you got to be the mentor. You got to be the one that's smarter than them. You know, you can't be the one that falls into all those old traps at 33 years old. You got to figure it out. Uh, all right. We're uh, we're scheduled for April 28th. That's going to be awesome. Uh, anything, yes, sir. You want, anything you want to mention this weekend about the amazing TC paintball? No, we're just doing more of the same. Come play some paintball. Even if you don't think you're going to enjoy it, I guarantee you, you are. Come out and make a reservation. Get some family and friends out here. Let's do it. Don't do it Saturday. We're, full, we're fully booked already. But let's talk about next week or uh, one of our other sessions. And uh, it'll be something that you enjoy. Maybe you're not even anticipating that it's something that's going to be in your life. But it could. All right, you're a good man. I'll take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Rick from TC Paintball. So, if you're just listening to the podcast, I'm doing some intense double duty while I'm interviewing Rick and talking to him because uh, Darla started to give me sass, <laughs> making noise like, oh, God, once she turns that on, so then she goes to the door. She has to go potty. So uh, I was able to calm her down by holding her in my arms like a baby. So another reason to have tier two so you can watch this shit. Because it's ridiculous. Stevie says, when did she get so big? She's actually the le- the smallest bulldog we've ever had. All right. Hey, look at these people. There's Rick. He's even laughing in my face. Um, she is like not even 42 pounds. She is little, 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 a little baby. Um, uh, I'm going to take her out to go potty. I hope you don't mind. I want you to stay right there. Talk amongst yourselves and, uh, I'll let this little peanut out and I'll be back with you. Cow fade. Oh, Fuck.
It's snowing like crazy out there. Damn it. Um, uh, I appreciate you. Abraham Lenin for signing up, subscribing. Walking around there, I got uh my crocs on, which are old as hell out in the snow. So it's so damn slippery. Almost wiped out. God damn. Since there's snow, the moisture goes right through the the holes in the shoe. My socks are soaked. I got to change my socks right now. That's what I'm doing. Next time, don't go outside with Crocs on when there's two inches of snow. Could have fallen right on my ass. Yesterday, that tournament, that was amazing how Oakland beat Kentucky. Oakland is, uh, that started as a fucking community college. There was Oakland Community College and Macomb Community College. And then they show up and uh, essentially just shoot lights out. Some guy named Jack Golke is the dude who was on fucking fire. And that's it. Sit down, Kentucky. You gotta love when the underdogs win. Michigan State, uh, pretty much a primetime performer for part of the uh, for part of the tournament already. That's good. That's really good. They beat the hell out of a very good Mississippi uh, State team. Kyle, I don't know if he's being sarcastic. He writes, "What? Oakland University won their game yesterday. First time hearing of this." I think he might be sarcastic because that's all anybody's talking about today. Uh, Kenny writes, Eric, don't miss Abraham Lenin's comment above. You always want to know how people found the show. Okay. He writes, or Abraham Lenin, I guess it's a dude, as Darla Malls Bruce on the couch. By the way, they both took dumps, so it's a good thing I went out there. Please, okay? It's Friday. Everybody's in a great mood. Do whatever you want weekend. Don't attack your brother while I'm trying to do my job. Is that possible? Big fan since the days of the show that must not be named. Oh, come on now. We can mention Free Beer and Hot Wings. Met you at a live show, and I had an... <laughs> And had an awkward interaction, which I cringe at all the time. Well, do tell. Kyle writes, I am being sarcastic. Greg and Michelle would not shut up about it. You didn't sh shut up about it. And the news will not stop talking. Too bad little brother is still... I can't, I don't, you didn't write English. I think you might already be stoned today. Um, yeah, I don't know. What are you doing listening to Greg and Michelle? You realize the insane asylum is on. Uh, I have a feeling this is going to be bad. Darla! Stop! God damn it! Holy shit. Yeah, Kyle, um, yeah, that, uh, I kind of want to smack your gay ass. Well, I smack you across the face, across your gay face. Now I don't want to smack your gay ass. Smack you across the face. This is kind of like um, EZ. Yeah, shut up. You're talking about it too much. I, I, don't, uh, I don't know if I appreciate your tone. God damn it. It's the story. It's absolutely a fantastic story. And you know how bad it is? Uh, Ryan says, is that a yellow card? It absolutely is a yellow card. I'm here. I put together some thoughts of things I want to say about the game. I'm excited to express myself. And here you are, before I even get started, being a cocksucker. I mean, well, I guess I shouldn't call you that because you are. But for fuck's sake, 
Give me a goddamn break. Uh, update on our pal Justin. As you know, uh, Justin from the Free Bear and Hot Wings show reaches out. I talked to him on his Facebook page because he did one of those stupid posts that he makes. First of all, he said, hey, uh, I'm suing for my right to get back on the radio. I'm fighting for my right to be on the radio with my lawsuit. And uh, I took exception to that. Now, I know why he's suing. I know the ins and outs of the case. I read his lawsuit, what he's alleging uh, in his lawsuit. He uh, is alleging mistreatment when he worked for Cumulus. He can still work on the radio. He can still do a podcast. Uh, After I said, Justin, what do you mean by fighting for your right to work in radio? What is keeping you from working? And uh, this went back and forth. And then finally, he gave me one of these. God damn. Every time he talks, it's all about, I love you. I love this. I'm asking you for forgiveness. And it's so fucking corny. Hold on. Darla! Um, All of his, a lot of his uh, uh, fans and friends are like oh you're because he announced that he's going to start putting roofs on and it's like that's good i'm actually glad you're doing that uh you you shouldn't be on the radio i've 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 heard you now um occasionally i'll get moments like this where people who will um assume that because i might rip on them because of what they do for podcasting like when i would do who are these justins uh they take it personal i i have no personal feelings about justin whatsoever All I can do is call him a phony and say that his show sucks. I've not met him. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you, but I've got a pretty good feeling about him. And I know a lot of people that do know him and have told me a thing or two about him. So when I read his post to me, it, it rings hollow. It rings like bullshit. Um, Eric, take some time reading the comments from the people that I've connect with over the connected with over the years. Feel the positive energy I've been putting out. Now read your comment again. Eric, just stop, man. You know the business and know what a contract is. I won't hide your negativity and false opinions from my page. I don't. I honestly don't know what he means by his um, contract. Okay? He worked for a radio station. He left a radio station. And then he started a podcast and then he stopped the podcast. That's all I can go by. I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of anything. And besides that fucking asshole said, I'm fighting for my right to be on the radio. Um, I won't hide your negativity and false opinions from my page because I want to lead by example on how to handle someone like you. It's such bullshit. All he wa- all he wants to do is say go fuck yourself. The only reason why Justin is not doing a podcast is because he sucks. And the only reason why he's not on the radio is because he sucks. He says I don't know what I ever did to you. Well, really nothing other than make these posts. I mean, now we're kind of dealing with some weirdness because you're full of shit and I'm calling you out on it. He says, but, but I ask you for forgiveness. I'm sorry I hurt you. I ask that you keep your negative thoughts to yourself and your audience. I spent years with people talking about you and all your faults. I have stayed Switzerland and showed you nothing but love and respect. You haven't showed me anything. You haven't showed me disrespect. You haven't said anything. This is the first time you've ever said anything about me. You don't show me love, you fucking asshole. You continue to harass and hound me about stuff that you know absolutely nothing about. Okay, let's be clear here. The only thing I've hounded Justin about is how fucking shitty he is. All right? I've goofed on his horrible podcast. That's it. And that's out there uh, right for the taking. What the fuck? You don't want people to talk about your fucking podcast. Don't do a shitty podcast. This is the last time I will entertain anything you have to say. I love you and I'm rooting for your happiness. God bless. 
Tophis writes, wait a minute. You go from A to Z and not in that order. What the fuck was that word salad? I wrote, you wrote a lot, Justin. There's a lot to process. I just asked you a question that you keep sidestepping with blessings and whatnot. How are you fighting for your right to work in radio? You are alleging mistreatment. You aren't fighting big radio to be allowed to work. Maybe you should rephrase your initial line on your post. Just a thought. That's literally the only thing I've been talking about here and asking is, how are you fighting for your right to work in radio? I didn't say anything other than that. And he's doing all this crazy shit. Then I wrote, thank you for the cool prayers and love, though. I can feel the energy entering my soul with the love and support. Patrick checks in. There is a lot of fake positivity here. Remember all the stories you fabricated on Free Bear and Howings? Remember how condescending you were about the people of East Tennessee on your train wreck of a podcast or trashing your neighbor because you were friend because she was friendly? You're so easy to figure <laughs> out. And I wrote, Yeah, those things ain't lovey dovey. I thought Justin loved everyone. My world is upside down. What a fucking idiot. Bob says, is he a born again Christian now? Uh, I don't remember him being this preachy when he was on Freeburn Hot Wings. Linda says he positions himself as Mr. Positivity. Dave from our, our pa- pal public radio, Dave says, Justin is the prime candidate for joining a cult. If he hasn't already. New arriver Abraham Lenin talks about the awkward react, uh, interaction between him and I, however long ago. It says, I mean, it's not that bad, but it was at Quaker Steak and Lube in Springfield, Illinois. I remember the day. You took the ketchup off my table for your breakfast and said to me, I stole your ketchup. Then I slammed my fist on the table and said, damn it. There were no more words after that. I don't know. Ha ha ha. Felt awkward. Great show though. Still, I have all of my VIP stuff and table marker from the show. You autographed an old porno DVD. Also good times. If I remember correctly, didn't we lose the feed or something like that? Wasn't there some type of technical issue there? That's about all I remember from that uh, thing in Springfield. Ah, yes. Um, What the fuck was the guy West something. Uh, some guy named Wes was, he was a program director in Albany and we didn't like him then. And then he got fired and he became the program director at Springfield. So he goes from one free and hot wings affiliate to another West styles. That's it. West styles. And you ever like meet somebody and, Within seconds, you realize there's something going on. There's something amiss, something you just, you, you, they give you a vibe that they are impossible to trust. That was Wes. I remember having the conversations when he was on uh, the radio station in Albany. And we're like, what do you think about this Wes guy? I don't know. I don't know. All right. He's done. He goes to uh, Springfield. Uh, and then. The next thing we know, Wes has made his own morning show and put himself on the air and we get fired out of the blue. It's like, oh no. So then I went ape shit and took to social media and started um, telling the audience to harass them. This was bad. I, I, I was taking all sorts of personal shots talking about how the girl on the air there forgot her name was, was fat. I was making all these horrible comments and, um, the general manager of the radio station threatened a lawsuit. And so Freebear called me. He goes, you got to stop. You're going to get fired. And, uh, I didn't think I could get fired, but I think I could have, I think I'm lucky. I didn't at that one, but I was so goddamn pissed off. So that's no excuse. But so then I let that go, but I was saying all sorts of mean shit about these people, especially the chick. I think I made some post about, 
This this guy does school closings and birthdays like I do now. And and this chick eats or something like that. And this is kind of a long story, but stay with me. Um, time passes and I get fired. And um, I don't remember if I interacted with that morning show after I got fired. I think I, I think I think what happened was after I got fired from Fever and Hot Wings, I was feeling very um, like I, I felt bad. I'm looking at at my past, and I, and one of the things that came to my mind was these two, this morning show, who I skewered on social media after we got fired from Springfield. So even though I was fired, um, there was some interaction with the girl on that show, and she might have like. Um, made a comment or something about me getting fired. Like everybody was being, oh, oh my God, I feel so bad. But she might have said, I don't feel bad or something like that. And then I felt bad that she was in that frame of mind. So I actually reached out to her and I said, you know, this is going to sound weird. I just got fired, but you know, I, I should have never behaved that way and or, or something like that. Something happened. And, uh, or maybe I'm mixing things up, the timeline. It doesn't matter. What I do remember is I go to BBL, I get fired, I start a podcast. This is years later. And I go to a uh, radio conference called Conclave in Minnesota, and they're having a segment on podcasting, and I'm speaking at it about how to, whatever, you know, the typical shit. Hey, how to take your show and bring it to the next level by doing online uh, uh, content to help you. And here to talk about it is Eric Zane, one of those fucking things. And um, I've told this story before, but it's worth telling again. Um, so then there, I sit down to eat and um, I recognize some people from radio station in Green Bay. And... Uh, I forget what it's called, and I don't I don't remember them, but I know I this is how it went. And I go, oh, hey, I know those people because we used to go to Green Bay and visit them. And I sit down, and there's the the program director and a couple other people, and and we all sit down to eat. And one of the people's really quiet, and um, I didn't really think much of it. And then that day ends. The next day begins, I'm back at the conference at the hotel. And then somebody, so for some reason, my brain pieces this all together. The quiet girl at the table is the girl that was doing the morning show in Springfield when I was uh, saying terrible things about her when we got fired. She has since left that station, and she's at the Green Bay radio station now, and she was seated at that goddamn table. And I'm like, uh oh, so, um, I go walking up to the program director and I get confirmation. I go, Hey, is that, and he goes, uh, huh. And I go, Oh no. And he's obviously been made aware of what's going on from her. And so he senses what I'm, I'm thinking. And I go, well, I got to say something. So I like approached her and I said, pardon me. Um, and I, you know, Hat in hand. I think I did a, try to apologize to her when I got fired from Freeburn Hobbins. I'm pretty sure that happened, but it was kind of, it was just through social media. Um, so I don't know if it resonated in any particular way. But now I'm face to face with her. And um, I basically just say, yeah, that was a fucking horrible thing I did. I'm, I'm so sorry I did that. And, and I, I talk about it on this podcast, too. Uh, there's a whole segment about it. And, uh, she was cool. She was cool about it. And she, I go, so can I ask, I sat down here and didn't realize it was you. Uh, can you explain what, what, ha what that was like? And she goes, oh my God, she was so horrible. Uh, looking at you, <laughs> I was just walling you off and I couldn't believe it. And you didn't know who I was. And I, I, I wanted to stab you with my fucking fork. And I go, oh my God, well, I appreciate you not stabbing me with the fork. And, um, so I, I had that conversation with her. I left, and uh, that's kind of where it went. I, I remember uh, reaching out to Wes Stiles, who I still think is a goddamn weasel. And I, I then I was like, hey, you know, I did apologize to him. And he goes, I don't accept it. He actually said, I do not accept your apology. Oh, well, all right. 
Win some, you lose some. I'm 50% from the free throw line. I, I made my peace with uh, the lady. And, uh, but you fuck, yeah, go fuck yourself. I don't even give a shit. That was so fucking crazy to me. God damn it. Uh, that is, uh, that's this edition of Easy's Radio War Stories. Um, let's see. Bulls on Parade says, didn't this guy bone his half-sister or something? I don't know about that. I don't recall. Abraham Lehman said, yeah, the last hour of that Springfield show was cut or something. Not Chuck Norris says, hated that guy. I think you mean Wes. Uh, not Chuck Norris says, I went full Eric Zane on her, and then I went to Eric Zaitunian. And I've never gone back. I've never said anything bad about her since. I, 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 you know, I don't even know where she is. I occasionally I'll like look her up and see what radio station she's working on, but I don't think she's part of um, the uh, the Green Bay, Wisconsin company anymore. But uh, God, that was fucking terrible. Holy shit, I'm an idiot. Okay, thank you for enjoying the show. Checking it out on Facebook, X, and YouTube, but. I got to cut you loose. I want you to sign up for my free show on Twitch. That way it's on in its entirety. You can get the whole thing from beginning to end uninterrupted. Uh, Subscribe to the channel. Follow the page so you know when I go live. You can give yourself a name and chat it up with the folks that are here. It's all great. Uh, Do that. Uh, Download the Twitch app at twitch.tv slash Eric Zane. I'm sorry. Just download the Twitch app and search Eric Zane live or go on your desktop to um, twitch.tv slash Eric zane live um the free podcast is available on audio audio form wherever you download shows as darla gets comfortable on sleeping on top of o'neill i prefer apple Podcasts, and then the patreon we got a big fraud saturday tomorrow we will do who are these zanes ben glaze and myself and then we will jump over after that to the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. You can enjoy it live and get it before uh, tier two gets it before tier one because it happens live. You can watch it live as it's happening or watch the video on demand later on. Tier one, day and a half, two days later, I make the audio available. Uh, five bucks a month on Patreon for all the audio, 10 bucks a month for the audio video live streams. But for you, it's free. If you've not taken advantage of the seven days free, do it. Seven days free can be yours if you go to patreon.com slash Eric Zane. And then just sign up for seven days free. It's that simple. If you've done it in the past, you're only allowed to do it once. It's just to get you to try it. Um, I suggest signing up and then cancel it. That way, if after the seven days you're like, ah, this sucks, you won't get charged. And then we go our separate ways. But if you like it, you can re-sign up again and actually put the money down. I don't want to trick you into spending money, okay? I want you to hear the content, and if you like it, sign up. If you don't, no problem. The choice is yours. As always, you can reach out to me on the Shoreliners Striping Inbox, eric at ericzaneshow.com. All right. See you, Facebook, X, and YouTube. X and Twitch. Pardon me. Facebook and Twitch. Brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. X brought to you by Blue Frost IT. Follow me on all my platforms, Facebook, X, and YouTube. I'm on Instagram, too, Eric Zane Show. Follow me there. And uh, that's about it. I'm even on TikTok. I did a couple TikTok videos showing off my hair. Eric Zane show on TikTok, I guess. God, I spend a whole fucking show. Uh, hey, follow me here. Follow me there. God, shut up. The open and live stream of this show brought to you by Blue Frost IT. Online at bluefrostit.com for all of your IT needs in West Michigan. Blue Frost IT. 616-285-50. Vouch merges creators like EZ with small business. Vouch.store slash Eric Zane 
for all of my products that you can check out. My policy shop. That is Frank Fuss, the independent agent, insurance agent slash broker who can help you every step of the way with healthcare.gov and or Medicare or life insurance or car insurance or home insurance or renter's insurance. You name it. Frank takes care of everything. He's literally your one-stop shop. That's why it's called mypolicyshop.com. To reach him, though, I want you to go to his uh, form, buyinsurancehere.com. There you just put in a few bits of information, who you are, phone number. Frank will schedule an interview with you to chit-chat about whatever you are interested in. Whether it be healthcare in the marketplace, a life insurance policy for you and yours, or uh, whatever. Buyinsurancehere.com. <coughs> Excuse me. While I'm at it, Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Megan, Jamie, and Eric, a wonderful family veteran lady-run business. Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. 616-532-6600. Reach out to them and take advantage of the best technicians, the best repair shop in all of West Michigan. Their website is irvines.com. That's E-R-Vines.com. Uh, Molly is here. Welcome back to you. I still haven't gotten my email, Molly. Um, excuse me. I need to find out, uh, more about you. You know, I, I, this is so important to me. Abraham Lenin is new. He just reached out up North. Justin, welcome back. Um, Bulls on Parade talks about sleeping with his cousin. He meant Justin. I swear he had some incest stories of some sort. I don't know. Who knows? All right. Off and running. I will be back. It's time to tinkle. Stand by. Cafe. All right. Uh, Today is a really uncomfortable day. Uh, because I have to meet with my urologist slash physician's assistant, or I don't know. I think, I think it's a physician's assistant. You know, you don't get to see the big doc because the big doc's so busy. So they, they pass it off to the PA. If you know, you just have like a, a minor issue. They don't suspect I have a major issue. I'm just suffering with an enlarged prostate. And it's made my life very difficult. Okay. I'm on two medications to help this process. And I would say that my results are marginal. Uh, When your prostate is the size of a football. It occupies all sorts of space in there, uh, you know, for bladder, which means I have to get up a whole bunch of time during the night and pee. And peeing is a goddamn nightmare because the stupid prostate makes it hard to pee. I'm like, I'm only 53 years old here. It's like I'm 90. But I have to explain. Uh, so how you been doing, Eric? How's your uh, how's your prostate? Uh, well, it's, it's uh, somewhat better, I guess. A li- marginally, I'm getting some results, I guess. As I've indicated, the medicine, the second medicine, uh, really, really puts a cramp on my sex life. My sex drive is down. So I'm just kind of like, eh, eh. My wife starts fondling me. I'm like, nah, eh. And then, um, you know how in pro wrestling, like at the end of the match, the wrestler has a finishing move. Like maybe uh, uh, Dwayne Johnson, the rock, will drop a rock bottom on somebody. Well, my finishing move used to be known as the sad clown. (laughs) 
because that's what Diana's face would look like after I dropped the, the sad clown on her. And now it's just might as well just be called. Uh, I don't, I can't even think of anything I'll, I'll leave it to one of you joke writers on the show as to what my finishing move can now be called. I mean, my yogurt cannon was so powerful, it would make a pew noise when the big moment would happen. And now it's just an embarrassment. It kind of like just rolls out like that tear out of the Indian's eye in that Don't Pollute America commercial. How pathetic is that? So now I got to explain this to this PA who's young and hot. I mean, she's like 30. And she's sitting there with her leg crossed, kicking her foot, looking at me. And I'm like, uh, thanks. So embarrassing. My God. Chris writes, from sad clown to just sad. Cole says, the limp drip. Doesn't really rhyme. I don't know if I like that. Kabubi says, it's now a dust cloud. I wish it was a dust cloud. It's not even that. All right. So as I uh, continue the podcast day, I'll get this done, and then I got to be there at 145. All right. Uh, last night, it was crazy because um, yesterday I took a nap and it was uh, it was a wild one. Two hours of deep, deep sleep. I'm experiencing the, this this midday deep sleep now after the since I started doing the morning show. Um, and then I wake up and I had said to the folks at Bosco's, I go, look, since dad smashed his brain in, that would be Doug. Um He's going to come in. This is yesterday. I know he's coming into work, but I predict he's going to get tired because of the, you know, traumatic brain injury he suffered. And he did. And uh, though he's there and shouldn't be, he should be resting. uh, I predict he's going to get tired. So call me when he uh, can't hack it anymore and has to go home. Then I went to bed. I wake up. I look at the phone. Can you be here? Oh, my God. I fucking, I didn't, I, I mean, I said it, but I didn't. Holy shit. So I'm up out of bed, uh, get cleaned up. Off I go over to Bosco's. Uh, I kick all sorts of ass again with Dougie and we crushed it. Uh, I may be there tonight. I don't know. It depends on if dad's brain is all fucked up. Uh, I talked to you yesterday about how at Bosco's, the story about that cunty looking woman and her stupid kids who trashed the bathroom and then came back and a uh, uh, total sense of entitlement on that crazy bitch. Uh, Dougie heard it along with his lovely wife, Jordan, and, uh, and, and he played it for Doug. They all loved it. They all fucking loved it. And then I'm talking to uh, Dougie there and I, he goes, you know, there's a chance she might find out that you were talking about that. I go, well, I know. That's why I mentioned it to you. Is it okay to talk about it? He goes, no, I want her to find out. I go, this is great. This is just great. I go, well, there's a chance. I mean, the only way it can work is if she's probably not a listener, but I mean, if she is, that's one way. And then she'd feel like an asshole. And then, um, or if someone who knows that family or knows the story and then through friend of a friend that now that's the best way for someone to find out. Because someone say, yeah, hey, I heard about this. Is that your kids? Yeah. Okay, well, EZ described you as looking cunty. Cole says, just play her this part of the podcast. Of course. Uh, Rich says, regarding the PA, sitting there kicking her foot with her leg crossed, kicking her leg, is she dangling her shoe off her toe? I know you have a foot fetish. No, she wears sneakers. But I know that the, doesn't that mean something? Like if you're sitting next to like a chick and she's got her leg crossed and that leg's bouncing. Okay. 
I think that means something. And I think that if that foot kind of is hanging off the toe there, not only is that hot, but that means something like they, like they want to have sex. And I think playing with hair is a big one too. If she starts like fucking pulling her hair, I've heard. I mean, I don't know. Up North Justin, who says nothing worse in the service industry than a cunty Karen. You know what Justin does up there other than drive around in a kick-ass uh, old school Chevy pickup? He's a guy who is in that, um, he like clears land. So let's say, uh, there is an acre of land and it's densely wooded by the end of the day. It's flat with no trees. He's got this fucking device and, uh, I don't know what the fuck it's called. An excavator or, and, and I'm not even sure if this is right, but I think he operates one of these deals where you like, he puts a thing forward and then it rolls. And then this claw grabs the top of the tree. And then on the bottom, it goes, and then like a 500 year old tree that's as big as a car is gone in like five seconds. And then just fucking throws a tree like the Hulk. Incredible. I think that what a kick-ass job that is. You know, you're in that thing. It's, it's cold as hell, but it's warm in the cab. You're smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee. Ripping down trees. Oh, God, that's a life. Fantastic. All right, so busy day for EZ. Where are we going next? Oh, my God. Yeah, I mentioned this to Rick. <laughs> this fucking idiot. Uh, gets a dream of a job of a lifetime working for Michigan football as a defensive line coach. This guy had a, a, a pretty good NFL career. But from college to now, all he's done is drive drunk. Greg Scruggs. He gets a job as the defensive line coach with Michigan football. He's working his way up the ladder. He signs the deal March 8th. Yesterday, he resigns. On the job. For 13 days. Uh, oh, this past weekend, Saturday, he got popped for drunk driving. Third time it's happened. And now he resigns. What are you going to fucking grow up and learn? You stupid son of a bitch. Now you lose a job of a lifetime. Uh, so there's that. That's news. Cam Sutton is news. I think he might be dead. That would be incredible. What a fucking fiasco. And it works out for the Lions, though. Meanwhile, locally, at a, um, in the Forest Hills community of Grand Rapids, a school worker is into kids and has been busted. Arrested on chi federal child porno charges. All right. So let's get the scoop on this dirt bag. Worker who was arrested on federal child pornography charges earlier this week. News Ace Megan Bunchman is in studio tonight with the latest about what we know. Megan? Brian Sue, good evening. Even before 28 year old Dreadley Arkenstein was arrested this week, a parent from Forest Hills Public Schools was questioned. Did she have a stroke when she said his name? Good evening. Even before 28 year old Dradley Arkenstein was arrested. Dradley Arkenstein? Brian Sue, good evening. Even before 28 year old Dradley Arkenstein was arrested this week, a parent from Forest Hills Public Schools was questioning his behavior. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at the story. The guy's name is Bradley Arkenstein. Oh, Megan? Brian Sue, good evening. Even before 28 year old Dradley Arkenstein was. Yeah, she's definitely stroked out there. She said Dradley. Arrested this week. Not that I get all my words right, but still, you, you, that needs to be pointed out. A parent from Forest Hills Public Schools was questioning his behavior with students. 
Call it a mother's intuition or just plain old trusting your gut. But even before a Forest Hills public school worker was arrested this week. She sounds like Daffy Duck. One parent knew something wasn't right. In text messages shared to News 8 by a school mom who doesn't want to be identified, she is seen raising concern to another parent who volunteers at the school about 28-year-old Bradley Arkenstein. Okay, so she took one look at him and said, yeah, keep an eye on this asshole, this neck bearded brick. Keep an eye on him, please. In quote, he gives me the ick at NT or Northern Trails and her child talks about him nonstop. The parent asked her friend to keep an eye on Arkenstein after the cleaner, quote, described his girlfriend to his daughter and added, quote, she's the only student's name he remembers. Mm -hmm. Arkenstein was arrested Tuesday at his family home near Rockford after undercover FBI agents learned he possessed and obtained child pornography. Okay, so while that mom was like, huh, I don't know, something fishy going on about him, uh, on a different avenue, uh, through online sources, he was uh, going after child porno. And, <clears throat> my God, the um, these internet task forces that are out there have have got it covered, you know? This is, uh, this is fantastic. They were able to get this guy uh, locked up. Court documents obtained by News 8 show that Arkestein told the undercover agent that he, quote, worked as a custodian for a school district during a conversation in the messaging app Kick. He now faces federal child pornography charges. Oh, oh, oh. In a letter sent home to parents Wednesday, Forest Hills Public Schools said that, quote, no Forest Hills students were affected. However, out of abundance of caution, the district said it has, quote, contracted with an external security company to conduct additional building searches for any non-district issue technology devices. Our mom confirmed in News 8 that Arcus Stein had been cleaning at both Collins Elementary and Northern Trails prior to his arrest. The school has placed him on administrative leave pending the investigation. And our mom, whose, quote, spidey senses were on alert, <laughs> wants to remind parents and kids alike this week that if you feel something or someone is off, say something. Yes. New That's fucking great. How about her? Uh, too bad for Dradley. Or Bradley. No, I shouldn't say too bad. I'm glad. Uh, Stevie says, don't they do background checks on people anymore? Um, well, perhaps they did. That doesn't, I mean, maybe, um, maybe he's not on anybody's radar. I mean, there are perverts who have no history of any type of criminal issues. So I don't know, or maybe he did have one. I, I, I don't think they said it in that story. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, seriously, if I work at a school, I am going to uh, really go the extra mile to profile people. I, I mean, you take one look at that guy, knowing what we know, and of course he's into kids. I think uh, I think they need to do a better job of you know, painting with broader strokes on people. Nick says, how about the you look like a pedo test? That's what I'm talking about. I, uh, when it comes to our schools, the, uh, the whole process of hiring seems to be a little bit wonky in more than one uh, realm. And, and that's one of them. I mean, if they don't look like a pedophile, they can pass that. At least you have that going for him. Like, is it, if, uh, if, if he would pass a background check, that's one thing. But if he looks like that, yeah, may, make up an excuse why he can't work there. But of course he looks like a goddamn pedophile. You look like a pedophile. And I think that that same type of scrutiny needs to be uh, done for uh, hot chicks, too. You know, when, uh, when you are hiring a hot chick, well, don't. Especially at the uh, high school level. Uh, the only hot chicks that can teach are like uh, preschool to like third grade, I think. Because uh, it's a fact that 99 out of 100 hot chick fourth grade teachers have tried to have sex with the kids. All right, women. And, you know, we have a policy here that all hot chicks are not guilty of this type of crime. 
So they use that to their benefit. Um, so if I am running a school, I'm not going to hire that guy who looks like a pedophile. And I'm not going to hire any any hot chicks. They're going to be old, crusty, bad-smelling, cigarette-smoking, coffee-drinking, uh, 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 warts-on-their-noses women who are not attractive in any way. Okay? That's what we need. I want ugly women, you go to the front of the line, and handsome men. Because the handsome men will probably pull uh, either tons of dick or vagina adult level. Like they're married to somebody. You know? Kyle says schools should ask these mothers to do their hiring. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I've got a story coming up on the Patreon that Mike Ball sent me. That yet another example... And I'm starting to think Mike Ball has a theory theory about this, that teachers are now, hot teachers, are now um, intentionally leaking that they are are on OnlyFans to get rich. We'll cover that in today's Patreon bonus podcast. All right. So I'm glad they caught that pedophile. Folks, it's getting uh, that time where we can uh, start thinking about getting our ACs tuned up, ready for the cooling season. A and E, heating and cooling, can help you with that. 616-516-8579. This is a $79 uh, visit to your home. Make sure that your AC is tuned up, ready to go, and running efficiently. The more efficient it runs, the less money it costs you to cool your home. And you're not um, speeding up the process of your AC's life, which is not infinite. If the machine works harder, it's going to wear out quicker. You don't want that. Have it running in tip-top form. A&E Heating and Cooling will do that for you for $79. You should see these folks twice a year now, or, well, in a month. And... uh when it's time to turn on the furnace. If you have anything that you need replaced, let's say you need a new furnace or an AC, these folks will do it for you. They can even replace your water heater if you need that. A and E, heating and cooling. 616-516-8579. We got Mario Flores from the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Uh, Wants you to reach out to him when it is mortgage time. Okay, from anywhere in the U.S., call Mario. Mention EZ. That's all you got to do and say, Mario, I need you. I want to get into a mortgage right now. Can we start that process? Um, And then once you get pre-approved, you shop for your house. And then good luck because it's still a crazy-ass market. But Mario will get you into a loan. 231-332-6505. Have him roll out the red carpet for you. NMLS number 3035 for those keeping track at home. And again, anywhere in the U.S., whether it's your first mortgage or you've done this in the past, give Mario a shot. Uh, talk to him. See what uh, he can do for you at 231-332-6505. We cannot forget about King's Room Barbershop. Three locations, Northland Drive, of course, Caledonia, and at 821 36th Street in Wyoming, Michigan. King's Room Barbershop, online at kingsroom.net. They are awesome. Love those folks. I got to get over there and get a trim. Thank you to Andy Skyver and Colleen Skyver. They are an amazing, amazing team, and I love them so much. Get your haircut. Guys, you get your haircut at King's Room Barbershop. If you've gone to Zach's in the past or Sport Clips or Jude's or Lady Jane's or any other place, just once. I just want you to try it once. King's Room Barbershop. Online at kingsroom.net. Not only guys, but chicks who like short hair. You like short hair? Get your hair cut there at King's Room Barbershop. All right. What a day. Feel good. I feel fantastic. Really starting to get into the groove now. Uh, Ryan refers to Ashley as a stupid pile of shit. I don't know what's going on there. Sounds like they're having a nice conversation. 
Jimmy is in attendance. Good morning to you, buddy. How are you? Sir Bob is here. Says that the guy who looks like a pedophile looks like the dude from the fifth element. I know exactly who you're talking about. It's a great reference. Love that movie. (coughs) Underrated in my mind. All right. Okay. I kind of lean on stories today. How about this one? A man has filed a federal lawsuit. Police brutality. St. Petersburg, Florida. He was arrested. He was uh, laying on the somebody's fucking front lawn, sound asleep, drunk. Cops show up and say, move on. And he's like, oh, God. I did it again. Several complaints came in. This happened back in June. Um, The cop there says, all right, we've gotten actually enough complaints. I'm going to arrest you. And he's like, oh, come on now. Say it ain't so. Uh, So they arrest, they arrest the guy and they put him in handcuffs and then they put him in like a van and they're going to transport him. Now, I'd never heard of this, but I guess when a cop wants to be an asshole, they uh, take you for what's known as a rough ride. And that's where you, the cop like drives like a dick. And then, you know, you're not, they don't put your seatbelt on you. And the only thing you can um, uh, break your, uh, fall with is your face this happened uh this is a term that's been used but actually before the 2015 death of uh freddie gray in baltimore maryland i don't know if you remember that one he was badly hurt and died after the rough ride so that's what they do they they put this dude he's a homeless dude and he's drunk all right we're gonna arrest you They put him in the cuffs. He's helpless. They put him in the van, no seatbelt on him. And then the cop starts driving like an asshole. And the guy's fucked up. They went to get the uh, footage inside of the camera and mysteriously it wasn't on. This is an image from like in, uh, during the transportation. The guy's like face down. He's completely beat beat to shit. But it gets worse. This cop grabs him by the ankles. And you ever like uh, when you were a kid, you you might uh, walk down the steps and drag like your dolly behind you, your your little toy. You're your stuffed animal and uh and the the thing's head goes all the way down while you're walking down, you're dragging it behind you. Well, that's what that cop did to the guy. And uh pulled him out, he's all fucked up. Oh my god. And his head is hits pulls him off the thing, and then his head hits the 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 floor of the van, and then there's a step down, hits the floor of the van, the on the step, and then the next solid surface is the concrete so then his head hits the uh, concrete steve he says weekend at bernie's style okay, i don't remember that scene but I-, I can just imagine that's what's happening there well when they did that um they broke his neck and uh now he's a quadriplegic so this is just a nightmare. Can you believe this? This guy, all he's doing is sleeping one off on the front lawn. And then they, they arrest him. He get his face breaks his fall from the rough ride. And then they, they yank him off and his neck breaks. He damages his spinal cord. And now he can't, but they go, all right, get out. I can't, I can't, I can't do anything. Oh my God. So then because of for whatever reason out of his a complication of um of the spinal injury but after that they had to saw off his legs 
Jesus Christ. So now he's a quadriplegic with no legs, which, I mean, I guess that doesn't really matter. He, he, both of his legs are amputated above the knee, according to the lawsuit. My God. The lawsuit states that the guy, uh, what is his name? I don't know. Uh, He's a... Eriberto Alejandro Sanchez Mayan. Uh, he, he's filed suit lawsuit states that Sanchez Mayan or Mayan should, should not have been arrested in the first place. Noting the criminal trespassing charge was later dismissed by the County court. That's the only thing he was being arrested for. So basically guys, shit face laying on the ground, questionable whether he should be arrested or not. Could have just sent him on his way. Yeah. Come on. People are complaining about you. Let's go. Let's get you. Let's, let's get you to the park bench. Instead, you know, they, uh, they, they break his neck, and he has to get his legs cut off. Jesus. Thacker is accused, the, that's the cop, is accused of excessive force and intentional battery. The other cop is accused of false arrest and malicious prosecution. And the city is accused of negligent supervision and training, among other uh, counts. According to the lawsuit, the plaintiffs asked for a jury trial. Who knows? how? It doesn't really indicate how much they're suing for, but my God. Uh, if, if that's the case, you know, if, if you're this guy at the end of the day, uh, it's, it's, I mean, his life is completely fucked up and it was fucked up to begin with, but now he's a quadriplegic that's gotta be worth. Oh my God. At least a hundred million dollars, right? Jesus. Rich says he ruined his career over a drunk, uh, over a drunk. Nice job, dipshit, dipshit cop. Well, um, yes, that's true. I don't know if that's the thing anybody's focusing on. Chris says cops beating up a homeless minority. Shocking. Jimmy says sawed off his legs three stooges style. Star Wars sucks. 69 says nice payday. Up North Justin 82 says some serious Yellowstone shit right there. I don't get the reference. I've never watched that show. I know a lot of people have. I have so much to catch up on. I think I'm done with TV. I watched that basketball game last night. The last five minutes of Oakland against Kentucky. Oh, I'm so sorry, uh, Kyle, that I mentioned Oakland, Kentucky. You know, the the big fucking upset of the tournament. The school that's actually in Michigan upsetting Kentucky. I'm, I'm so sorry I talked about something that you've heard about before. Star Wars sucks 69 says, fuck Oakland. No doubt you had Kentucky in the final four. Way to go. It reminds me, we should take a look at our uh, tournament. Tournament challenge bracket. Everybody's is busted already. Okay. Let's see. Tournament challenge. Huh? All right. Group results. Let's see, I am 41 in the group. Nate Bull is first. I don't know if that's Nate Bull. I thought it, I can't read it. Andrew Fueling is up there. Um, this person has 140 points. I can't even tell like the names. Uh, Stephen Hazard picks Michigan State to win the whole goddamn thing. A lot of people have UConn. Some have North Carolina. Some Purdue. Um, looks like, uh, easy's new number one supporter picks North Carolina state. I wish you guys would have saved these under like your name. So I could know, uh, Amanda's cans is in 21st place. I think I might be near the bottom. Yeah, I am. Um, these three people here didn't make their picks. They are in last place. 
And then this person is in, well, has 80 points. Um, I have 90. So I am basically second from the bottom. My bracket is already totally busted. God damn it. All right. Of course. Ryan says, I am whooping your ass. Sorry, big fraud. Ryan says, my name is on there, you pile of shit. I missed it. Anyway, good luck. Good luck to you. All right. That's all I got for you today. I'm going to take this show over to Patreon. I have that story about the latest teacher on OnlyFans. Meanwhile, give me your suggestions for asshole of the day. I need those. Oh, no, there's one more thing I want to show you. Oh, my God. I knew I was forgetting something. Uh, it's a TikTok video. Dude was um, speeding in his Porsche way too fast. Watch how many times... This thing rolls. It's going so fast, you can't even pay attention. Uh, we have multiple views of this accident. Wow. Oh, my God. Fuck. That looks like the big one at Daytona. That goddamn car is is ripping down the it's rolling down the street at a high speed. I mean it's it's not it's not even rolling from wheels. It's just rolling rolling. Wow. They're lucky it didn't hit those pumps. Jesus. Guess the guy's okay. That's how it is always. You know, that's that's one thing. If you're gonna get into a bad wreck like that, make sure you're drunk. Because you'll live. You know. Tyler says assholes like that end up walking away with no injuries. That's because they're just they're they're loose. They're out of it. You know. You see a, a car like that could uh, hit a bus. And everyone in the bus is killed instantly. And it's engulfed in flames. And the guy just gets out and like walks home. Doesn't even know what happened. Incredible. I'll need your suggestions for asshole of the day, please. Don't forget to join me on a big fraud Saturday. With Ben Glaze and your old pal EZ. Thank you to the Grand Rapids Gold. There are two games remaining. Get a group and go see. Thursday is the next game of the two remaining. $2 beers, $2 dogs. Hell yes. Go to grandrapidsgold.com for more information. Get your tickets. Come hang out. Come see me. Send me a text. Send me a message. I'm here, EZ. I'll put you on the big board. We have so much fun at those games. You will love it. GrandRapidsGold.com. Get a group together. Tickets as low as 14 bucks, plus $2 beers, $2 dogs with your Grand Rapids Gold. Cannot forget about Impact Power Sports. Online at ImpactPowerSportsMI.com and their fantastic location in Rockford, Michigan along 14 Mile Road. Thank you to them for being a key sponsor. Whether you need a side-by-side -side motorcycle, ATV, UTV, three-wheel, five-wheel, six-wheel, e-bike, uh, zero-turn lawnmower, okay, industrial, Yamaha golf cart, they have it all at Impact Power Sports, online at impactpowersportsmi.com. Uh, we talked to Rick from TC Paintball, always great. Book an event there. He's got uh, he's packed this weekend, but next weekend... Uh, either for workplace team building, maybe the, your, the local kids get together instead of trashing uh, local restaurants 
and uh, have a paintball event with TC Paintball online at tcpaintballgr.com. Get your cannabis from Green Medicine Shop up in Greenville, Michigan. Now, this is a medical dispensary. Easy why? I go to the recreational place. Okay, a lot of reasons. First and foremost, they're a sponsor. They support me. So when you support them, um, they continue to support me. You see how that works? It's very, very important. We have to do this. So if uh, you do partake and you're entirely legal to do so and, and whatever, uh, get your cannabis from the Green Medicine Shop. The only way to consume cannabis in Michigan, if you are under 21 but over 18, is medicinally. So there you go. Get it legally by filling out the form and getting your med card. You can do that. On the website, thegreenmedicineshop.com. Cost you 90 bucks to get it. However, when you do it via the way I just said, you get a $100 in-store credit. If you have any questions about any of this, reach out to me, eric at ericsaintshow.com. But if you do partake, try Green Medicine Shop. Uh, No 10% excise uh, tax on their medicinal cannabis as well. And last but not least, the tax hobbit. Tag accounting online at 616, damn it, online at tagcpa.net. 616-301-9516. Love them. Um, when it comes to tax time, they've got you covered. Doesn't matter where you are in the U.S. Tag accounting will be able to help you. They have an online portal where you... Upload your documents. They see it. They've got your date down of when your taxes are done. You know that. You're waiting by the phone in case the tax hobbit has a question for you. And then uh, you get your taxes done. And uh, support a sponsor of the Eric Zane Show podcast. As you should, all of the sponsors, when you can. And mention me, please. Okay. Seeing how to spell Arkestein. Your asshole of the day, glad he got busted, is the janitor and has Megan Bunchman called him Dradley Arkenstein. Congratulations. You are the asshole of the day. You folks have a good rest of your Friday. I will be with you in just a few short minutes on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. And then I'll talk to you tomorrow on Patreon with Ben Glaze. Who are these Zanes? And then the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. That is my time on the free one. Thank you. Molly says she's going to send me an email. I'm so happy. And for you, everybody, don't be a stranger. I love corresponding with you. Eric at EricZaneShow.com on the shoreline of your shoreliner striping inbox. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan says, all you bitches, keep your tits tight. Have a great weekend. It's a horrible thing to say what is wrong with you, you sick fuck. Oops. Cow fade. What the fuck is wrong with me? All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye.